Hi, I'm Demetrius from Quantum and this video is Denitrification Explained. As promised, 100% of the ad revenue generated from this video will be going towards charities and causes we believe in because the next big idea might just come from someone we help. Let's get right into it. First, let us recap on our previous video. As you can see, denitrification is a key step in the nitrogen cycle and one of the most important biochemical reactions on Earth. It is only fitting that we give it an in-depth video. Before we begin, we must understand some key terms. Oxidation for the purposes of this video will be described by gaining oxygen, whereas reduction will be defined by the loss of oxygen. Let's take a look at denitrification in depth. As we can see, nitrate reacts with reduced carbon sources, which we've denoted as CX. The nitrate is converted to nitrogen gas and the CX is converted to carbon dioxide. The nitrate is reduced into nitrogen gas as it is losing oxygen and the reduced carbon source is oxidized into carbon dioxide as it is gaining oxygen. This forms what we call a redox reaction. We have the red from reduction and the ox from oxidation, hence redox. Now let us learn how nitrate removers work. There are three main types of nitrate removers. They include polymer spheres, liquid carbon dosing and nitrate removing resins. Polymer spheres consist of a polymer of reduced carbon sources which dissolve in the water slowly, becoming smaller in size. These spheres feed the denitrifying bacteria reduced carbon sources, which allows them to be used in the denitrification reaction mentioned earlier. Mathematically, as the size of the sphere decreases, its relative surface area also decreases. The formula for the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Since the variable we are changing is the radius as it is shrinking, then we can substitute numbers into the formula. For example, if we have two spheres, one at 5 mm in radius and one at 1 mm in radius, then the factor of change is 25 times. This means that the 10 mm sphere has 25 times more surface area than the 2 mm sphere. The larger sphere has more water contact than the smaller one as there is more sphere coming into contact with the water due to its relatively larger surface area. Chemically speaking, depending on the solubility of the sphere, as well as the chemical concentration of the sphere dissolved in the water, there is going to be an equilibrium going on between the sphere and the water. What does this all mean? Well, in summary, if we know that the more surface area tends to provide more concentration in the water, which provides more denitrification, then as the spheres shrink, the amount of nitrate they are removing also decreases. This is not a linear trend. If we simplify every other variable and just focus on the surface area, we get a graph looking like this, which is a little tricky to fine tune nitrate levels as there are other factors that add variables. Next is liquid carbon dosing, which is our preferred method of nitrate removal for saltwater aquariums. You are dosing a specific amount of liquid containing a precise amount of reduced carbon sources. This amount will remove a calculated quantity of nitrate. This method is very easy to dial in as you are working with a consistent method of application and produce a linear dosing trend. The liquid containing reduced carbon sources will be part of the denitrification reaction we have mentioned earlier. We do have two salt water nitrate removers which are completely different formulations and are fine tuned specifically for the different nitrate ranges. HR nitrate remover is suitable for nitrate above 15 parts per million, whereas LR nitrate remover is suitable for 15 parts per million and below. More on them in a future product video. Finally, we have nitrate removing resins, which are our preferred method of nitrate removal in freshwater aquariums. These are often spheres which simply bind the nitrate and take it out of the water column. They are fantastic for freshwater as most carbon sources are ineffective in freshwater due to the lack of denitrifying zones present. However, they can have low efficacy in salt water. The ions dissolved in salt water interfere with the binding of the nitrate ion, reducing its effectiveness. This can result in poor performance in saltwater aquariums and why we recommend using ours only in freshwater aquariums. Ionic concentrations are much less in fresh water and there are ways to dial in the amount needed with ease. Since the nitrate resin does not dissolve in water, we are able to simply add more or less depending on the bioload of the system to easily fine tune the amount needed. Based on over a decade of research and development, in our scientific opinion, the nitrate removers we supply are using the most effective methods of nitrate removal relative to each environment. More info on our nitrate removers will be in a future video. We hope this video not only helped you understand denitrification in depth, but also made you aware of some of the methods used to control nitrate in your aquarium. 
That is denitrification explained finished. The next video is phosphate removal. If you're interested in learning more about what we have to offer, check out the links in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to post on our Facebook group, The Q. If you like this video, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay notified. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.